Okay, if we can uh, reconvene our meeting to open session, the board has been in executive session since six o'clock uh, to um, discuss multiple personnel matters. Um, if we could begin by all standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We could have introductions. Dave Hurst. Chris Meyer. Christine Beck. Wendy Dury Sampson. Jody Monroe. Holly Dellenbaugh. Meredith Moriarty. Willow Bear. Jonathan Fishbein. And Judy Kehoe. Uh, first up on the agenda is our approval of minutes. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the minutes from the April 21st, 2021 regular board meeting. So, so moved. Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Next, our meeting reports. Um, and first up is our superintendent's report. Uh, thank you. So I'd like to first congratulate Wendy and Willow. You have your certificates at your chair for participating in NISBA's leadership training. You can frame that on your wall somewhere. I Whoever will. looks good. <laughs> this is we were going to the National School Boards Conference, I think. Oh. I think that's what it's oh. uh, Leadership development training? Yeah, I, th that must count towards that. Oh, well, good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I'd also like to just provide an update. I did send something out earlier today uh, re relating to the school reopening and the guidance that we've received. And I know I sent it out prior to, but there definitely is some confusion. And I think part of it stems from uh, what the governor talks about in general community. They talk about easing the restrictions as of May 19th. And it gets a little confusing because not all of those uh, guidelines apply to school. In fact, schools have their own guidelines that we're supposed to follow. Uh, but New York State did update their guidance based on the CDC recommendations a few weeks ago. Uh, we have not received any additional guidance, and I don't anticipate that we will. In fact, I've heard that that guidance will uh, remain through the end of this year. Um, the four BOCES. Uh, superintendents with the district superintendents did recently send a letter um, to the governor's office and all our legislative representatives asking them to please provide schools with guidance or as much guidance as they can for our reopening plans in September because some of the current guidance in the state um, that's problematic. Um, I know many people want all their children back and I understand that and we've said all along that we, our goal is to have all students back. And so in the CDC guidance, they reference the three feet, which does apply in some cases, but there are restrictions to that in the school guidance. For example, six feet is always the required distance between adults um, and between students. Six feet is required when eating meals or snacks or drinking, so in the cafeterias. Um, and so that may mean that meals obviously can't be eaten in classrooms, which is what happens at the elementary schools currently with six feet of distancing. Um, activities that require projecting the voice, so choir um, and phys ed, things such as that. And six feet of physical distance must be maintained in common areas and outside of classrooms, such as the auditoriums, gymnasium, cafeterias, and hallways where possible. So the other piece that's in that guidance talks about secondary students uh, cohorting them. And I know I've talked about that, that we don't have cohorts in our middle and high school because of the way the schedule works. So that's problematic for reopening and having all students back. And the other piece that we also highlighted was that there is also uh, social distancing required on school buses. Mm -hmm. And so some ease of those restrictions would be helpful because we are required to transport students and the parents have been great this year about helping with that. But that would be another piece for us in regards to getting all of our students back. So those are just some of, I think, some of the pieces that uh, it's not necessarily well known but does prevent us from having all students back currently. 
Uh, so our plan is to, when I sent the communication out today, is to maintain our current plan where we have some K6 in every day for those who want it um, in hybrid model and to maintain our VLA through uh, the remainder of this year. I am planning on having a couple of parent meetings at the beginning of June that I'm hoping we will have some guidance <laughs> on to maybe answer some of those questions for the fall. So I do think the current guidance does give us some idea of what uh, we'll need to consider for the fall, but I'm hoping that some of those other pieces uh, that we asked for clarification for will have that before the June time because obviously that helps us with our planning as well. Uh, some of the other pieces that I know people are anxious about or asking us about are end of year activities. And we did get guidance uh, from the State Department of Health on end of the year activities. Again, those are different for schools than what's required for general uh, venues in the community. So we are required to follow those. Uh, we, Mr. Domel at the high school did send out a survey about graduation to consider the Times Union Center, something on site here for everyone, or smaller group um, options like we did last year. So I think he is planning to share that out with the community in the next few days, early next week, what the plan is for graduation. Uh, there was, a, a, I would say, an overwhelming response to consider the TU Center, so we don't have to deal with weather um, outside. Last year it was quite warm, if those of you who were there. <laughs> um, and then looking at um, a prom or a senior ball, I know uh, Mr. Domel has shared that they are looking at that, <clears throat> again, this is uh, guidance that keeps changing, but they will consider some options. And I know they're planning a parade and some other activities. The elementary schools are also planning some field day activities, moving up ceremonies still. Obviously, they look a little different, but uh, most of the guidance for those um, are pretty clear. But again, they're not the same as they are for just you know a restaurant in the community. They're a little bit different. That, we have to adhere to so um when you say prom ball are we just talking a, a senior event senior okay. senior event right i just wanted to clarify yep yep and if parents have questions about these things um is dave domel the best person to reach out to well it depends on what their question is because we have senior class advisors we have student senate that are also involved so there is a website and there's a um, place where they can put a frequently asked question, which will go to Mr. Domel, and then he can decide if he'll respond or someone else will. Certainly, they can email him, um, but you know, if he starts getting 300 emails about senior events, he might have a hard time responding. So that website is being updated regularly, so that's a great place. And he sent that out multiple times to parents, so that would be a good place for them to start. Okay, great. Yep. Do you know if it's also up on our website? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, it's. I just there's a new article up there, I think, that has a link to it. It's in the main little box of stories, mm -hmm. and they can go to that story, and it'll link them to the website. Great. Okay. Jody, can I ask a few questions um, regarding the I understand um, why the three foot distance doesn't apply to us um, but I know that we all also would like to get as many children as possible into school as frequently as possible what um, what can we do in terms of bringing more kids in I know we can't have kids in every day, but can we fit more kids in for those kids who need to be in school every day? So both the middle and high school have brought more kids back, um, particularly kids, um, you know, we've looked at all year, special ed and ENL students who are, who are having a hard time learning in an online environment. Uh, but the second half of the year, well, I should say after February break when the, the numbers started to improve, the middle and high school did uh, reach out to families. We sent a communication out about concerns parents have, and they have brought back pretty much as many kids as they can at this point. I know that the high school, those numbers were down, but um, since the last 10 weeks started, 
I know in walking by classrooms, the classrooms are pretty full now. Mm -hmm. So the other piece that has to be considered is not just the classroom space, but some of those other things I mentioned, like the cafeteria um, for eating capacity and things such as that. So right now, um, based on the numbers, the middle and high school is pretty much at capacity with the six foot distancing. Okay. And how did we decide which students to invite back for the full week? Um, well, they worked with, obviously the counselors mm -hmm. played a big role in that. So uh, counselors worked with the administrators and parents to decide there were students who were struggling um, academically, who were not passing classes, were in jeopardy of failing. Um, also some students who were really struggling emotionally. Um, so it was, you know, I don't, I can't say they used a, Right. you know, hard and fast yeah. set criteria. It was simply a matter of communication between the counselors and the administration and, and obviously the teachers who were concerned if kids weren't showing up um, in the hybrid model, they just weren't participating. Obviously they were flagged to um, bring to the counselor's attention to try and get some of those students to, and some of them, it was just to get them to come to the hybrid model because mm -hmm. they were all virtual. So there's been a combination of trying to get some students in more frequently, either from all virtual to hybrid, or there were some students that we brought in from hybrid who were just, that wasn't working to a full time, but um, obviously that's limited based on capacity. Okay, because I just want to make sure that we are paying attention to that mental health aspect of it, because I know that there are students out, out there that are performing fine academically, but are struggling and parents know it and they don't know how to help their kids. Yeah. Um, so what, what are we saying to those parents who see their kids who are, are not on the, the cusp of failing academically, but who are seeing real mental health struggles after you know, a year plus right. of going through this? What, what can those parents do? So they, I would suggest they reach out to their child's counselor mm -hmm. or um, if they're not comfortable with that, they could reach out to Kristen Connor, who's our director of counseling, who can put them in touch with a counselor here. Mm -hmm. um, it could be maybe a referral to an outside counselor that might make sense, or we could set up counseling virtually, or mm -hmm. when the students are here, our counselors do some on-site counseling as well. So the counselor would be the best person for the parent to contact if this child seems that they're doing well academically, but maybe there's things going on that we might not be aware of at okay. home. That would be the best route to take. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on reopening? Okay. Um, I also wanted to highlight a couple of students, uh, Justin Dong and Aisha Garcia. They were selected to represent Bethlehem at the Capital Region Scholars Recognition Program. Um, and the program is sponsored by CASDA. One of the features of this particular program is each student is asked to choose a teacher who has a, had, had a significant impact on their high school education. And both of these students chose uh, Rachel Linehan, who is our math and computer science teacher at the high school. So I'd like to congratulate um, our students, Justin, Aisha, and also Ms. Linehan. I think it's a virtual celebration this year. <laughs> In the past, it used to be a nice dinner, but uh, not this year. Um, and lastly, I want to recognize um, Ian Knox, who is here with us this evening, who was selected by the interview committee after a long, hard, arduous process mm -hmm. uh, to be the next principal of Hamagrell Elementary. So I just want to introduce Ian to the board, and I think he has uh, a few words he'd like to share. Welcome, Ian. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, first, I want to thank Ms. Monroe. Dr. Hurst, uh, Ms. Kehoe, Holly Dellenbaugh, and the entire Board of Education for having me here tonight to really express my gratitude for uh, this opportunity to be the next principal of Hamagrell. I'd also like to thank um, Dave Kay and congratulate him on an incredible career at Hamagrell um, and wish him well his retirement. Uh, Dave and I have been fortunate enough to speak a few times in the last week, and he's been extremely gracious with his time, even offering an opportunity to come a few days this spring. Um, and really start to ingratiate myself into the Hamagrell community and be ready for the July 1st start. So I want to thank him for his graciousness. 
um, and really his commitment to ensuring that um, the next era of Hammer Grill is taken care of. So thank you, Dave. Um, and, you know, for me, my biggest responsibility, I think, as the principal of Hammer Grill is to ensure that I foster curious, empathetic, resilient rethinkers who want to take risks, uh, on occasion be okay with being wrong, um, love unconditionally, respect themselves, and respect their community. Um, and this can be done in one way for me, is building relationships from day one with the staff, the community, and the students that make Hammer Girl so special. You know, relationships are the part of who I am as an educator and as a person. Uh, I look forward to ingratiating myself soon in the Hammer Girl community. The outpouring of support I've already received from BC community and Hammer Girl community has been remarkable. Um, and to be the name of the next principal of Hamagrell is truly an honor of a lifetime. And I thank you again for your trust and encouragement and support as I embark on this new journey. So thank you so much for having me tonight. And, and more importantly, thank you for, for allowing me to be the next principal at Hamagrell. I'm really excited to get started. So thank you so much. Thank you and, uh, and welcome. Um, and um, in light of Ian's presence with us uh, tonight, uh, I would ask for a motion to move our professional personnel action items on the agenda. So um, moved. You say so moved? Second. So, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following professional personnel action items, 1 through 16. So moved. Second. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Congratulations and welcome, Ian. Thank you. Welcome. welcome. Thanks, Ian. Congratulations. <laughs> I told him he could leave. <laughs> No, 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 please. You'd get stuck with the budget. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> nice. Nice Was that all you had? Yes. Okay. Sorry. That's it. Um, anybody have any other questions for, um, for Jody? Um, moving on to the board report. Um, I wanted to thank everybody who was involved with the second vaccination clinic this past Saturday for all the kids getting their second shot. Um, I heard that it uh, went very smoothly and I love that we were able to get, I think, 400 plus kids fully vaccinated. Um, that's great for the school and the community in general. Um, and I, uh, I also wanted to recognize that uh, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, um, and I really wanted to say a hearty thank you to all of our teachers in the district um, who have, there's no other way to say it than to say they've been going above and beyond um, this past year uh, and taking care of all of our kids. Um, and a special thank you also to, uh, uh, of appreciation for Chris Meyer our other teachers sitting over there. Um, and that's all I had. So I don't know if anyone else had anything they wanted to share. Just that the um, musical is coming up this weekend, right? And um, Yes, the uh, theory, theory of, relativity, of Relativity, the high school musical, will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Streaming. Um, streaming. streaming. And um, it's at uh, 730, and you buy your streaming link, and you can watch it. I'm excited. I've done that on Mother's Day. <laughs> awesome. Anybody else? I just wanted to thank our teachers as well for Teacher Appreciation Week. I know this year's been extremely stressful with the unknown of like whether or not they could catch COVID from students and wearing masks and all of the PPE stuff and having to change their classrooms and the online learning and the hybrid and teaching remote while teaching and you know in person at the same time and the stress that it's had on their families and just like Holly said above and beyond that um, it's been an unprecedented year and uh, I really want to thank our wonderful teachers who really show that they love and care about our students um, because there's no other profession that um, really worries about those kids as much 
and uh, feeling empathy and how much sadness they've been going through. I know so many teachers who just feel so sad all the time just seeing the kids come in feeling dejected. And so I just want to let everybody know how grateful I am that they are dedicated in the way that they are. So thank you. Anybody else? Anything you want to add? Um, moving on to our presentation this evening on the 2021-2022 the school budget overview. Okay, thank you. So tonight is the night that we'll have our official public hearing when the public has the opportunity to comment on the budget. It's going to be an unusual year because of our COVID times. So we're asking any members of the community who wish to send in comments. Uh, there's a dedicated email address that will be appearing on the bottom of the slides as Brittany is highlighting there. So any comments can be sent in there. So the budget was adopted by the board. Um, the budget newsletter is soon to go out. So that will be arriving in everybody's mailboxes at home so that they can get all of the information there. And of course, all of the information is also available on the district's website where they can look back if they're really interested in the budget and see all of the prior videos as well. So the uh, budget, if you go to the next slide, uh, Brittany, has been adopted at about $102 million. That is a decrease of about $1.4 million from last year to this year, largely driven by the reduction in our principal and interest costs on our bonds. So a little bit unusual to be a, a decrease. The tax levy increase is 0.75%, and that will yield $515,000 in additional revenue to the district. However, the figures are correct. Right now, based on the assessed values that have grown from last year to this year, there is going to be a projected decrease in the tax rates that residents pay. So in the town of Bethlehem, it will be a 0.08% reduction in the rate. That is lower or more actually um, than the decrease that's going to be seen by New Scotland residents um, because of a shift in the equal, equalization rate this year. New Scotland residents will actually see a two point, almost 2.2% decrease in their rates. So it really has maintained the same level of services that we have going forward and um, preserves our services and uh, hopefully positions us to reopen back in normal times uh, once again post-COVID. Okay. So the adopted budget totals, um, again, we did not have any significant changes because we maintained the same level of programs. The only change was an increase in transportation for the software and licensing fees for the GPS telematics um, devices that are proposed. The uh, reductions in salaries from the retirement of a number of our staff, and then also a 1.0 FTE increase in instructional salaries for specials teachers at the elementary level. And then other than those changes on the expenditure side, it was a state aid increase, which was the big news this year of almost $1.4 million plus the tax levy plus a small use of fund balance of 390,000 to balance out the revenues. So if you look at the next slide, you can see the uh, total school taxes will be at $69.2 million. Uh, state aid up to 26.8 million because of the infusion of uh, foundation aid this year and a total of 102.037. So the final state aid estimate is really phenomenal because for years we've talked about how the foundation aid has not been fully funded to the levels as the formulas would yield. Our total foundation aid should be closer to $17 million. And in this year's budget, there was an influx of close to $1.4 million in total aid. Uh, the foundation aid not only is going up significantly in this coming budget year, but the proposal is for the next two years to see the full restoration of those scheduled foundation aid amounts. 
So um, that bodes well for our future budgets. If we have state aid coming in, that means that we're able to limit the extent of our tax increases for the community. Okay. The tax cap calculation, we are well below the calculated maximum allowable levy per the tax cap formulas. We could have levied up to 1.61% or another 1.1 million. Uh, based on the relative uh, low level of growth, growth on the expenditures, we were able to pass the budget at 0.75 and then balancing out the remainder at 390000 On the expenditure side, um, the totals, of course, match the revenues at 102037 and there really aren't significant changes in either the salaries. Uh, the salaries are an increase of about 1.6% over the prior year. That's maintaining essentially the same staffing levels. Um, fringe benefits are increasing just below 3%. That's largely driven by our pension costs and some slight health insurance increases. And then uh, the debt service, as we mentioned, was the significant reduction of almost $3 million because of the uh, repayment of some older bonds. And um, if you go to the next slide, that just breaks out the budget by programmatic area, um, showing the largest components being the instructional program and our special ed and student services, and then all of the other benefits and support items. Included within the budget is a mini capital project. It's called Capital Outlay in uh, the state ed system. And this allows us to do a replacement of a capital project within a single building. We've been doing this for a number of years now. And this year, it's the high school server room that's getting a cooling system um, upgrade so that we can keep our uh, tech flowing smoothly. Um, the uh, next slide shows just a quick overview of our fund balance and reserves based on our projected surplus this year. And the key thing to note is the increases in the 2019 capital reserve. Based on the under expenditures in the current year budget, we're able to roll that into the 2019 capital reserve. And with the capital project that is now being developed, we will be able to take those reserve amounts and pay cash for the capital project um, for up to close to half of the capital project, which will ultimately lower our future debt service costs. The, uh, there are a number of propositions that will be on the ballot this May 18th for the vote in addition to the uh, budget proposition. Uh, we have our bus purchase proposition to purchase up to nine large buses. And I was hoping to have word by tonight on our grant application with NYSERDA. It's due any day now. Um, we have applied for a million dollars of funding to enable us to purchase up to the maximum authorized number of electric buses, which would be five. So uh, we will shout that out to the community and to the board uh, once we have that uh, decision from them. Um, but if approved, we would be able to buy five electrics and four diesels. The second transportation proposition is to fund the charging station infrastructure if we are able to buy the electric buses. And then the last proposition is to add a GPS and telematics software and hardware to the entire fleet of 132 buses. And that will add some efficiencies to how we are tracking the maintenance of the buses. And it will also enhance the safety features for our students. Um, each of the buses will now have a tablet. So the drivers are able to verify the students who they're picking up and dropping off and we'll have the stop information so that they can um, confirm that the child is at the right location. So those are the three separate propositions. Like any of our capital purchases, we cannot make those expenditures without the approval of the board and the approval of the community. 
Also on the ballot, we have two board seats and two candidates. So Catherine Nadeau will be the first candidate appearing on the ballot. She would be new to the Board of Education. And then Willow Bear's seat is also up and she is running again and will also be on the ballot. And a thank you to Chris Meyer again for uh, his service. And uh, the, um, at this point, we can open it up if there are any comments from the public. I'll take a so tonight we are holding the public hearing on our proposed budget as required by law. The notice of this hearing was published in the spotlight and a copy of the proof of publication will be included within our official minutes. Uh, may I have a motion to open the floor for public discussion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, that passes. At this time, I invite any members of the public uh, to speak who wish to offer up comments either for or against on the proposed budget. I ask that you please provide your name for the record um, when offering your remarks and comments can be sent um, as indicated um, on the screen to budget at bethlehemschools.org. And there is one comment. Um, there is a comment from Charmaine Wichesinger um, on electric buses um, asking besides the environmental impacts, what are the benefits of electric buses? Okay. Um, so the electric buses, of course, the primary reason is to benefit the environment. There are zero emissions from the electric buses. But in addition to that, uh, the benefit is the total cost of ownership is typically far lower for the electric buses than for the diesel buses. The industry averages were between 30 to 60% of the costs of what you're paying now for your diesel buses is what you would be spending. So we would imagine based on that research and the um, data that other districts and uh, transportation authorities that have been using electric buses, they have seen far lower costs for the electric buses. So um, even though they're a little bit more expensive up front, uh, based on the lower costs to operate, um, you're able to do a, a good deed for the environment and for the health of the overall community, and then also save on those operating costs. The electricity is essentially far less expensive to fuel those buses than it would be for the diesel. And it, it's not just, Judy, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not just the cheaper electricity cheaper power source. Mm -hmm. It's also, there are no oil changes. Yes. Um, and the maintenance Filter changes is, and... Mm -hmm. So that the maintenance is where you're getting that additional cost saving. Yes, yes. Which so, also is a savings in labor. Absolutely. Thanks, Judy. Yeah. We do not currently have any questions or comments, um, but I'd like to wait just a few more seconds give people a chance just in case they are sending in an email while we're waiting Judy um, could you just go over the ballot once again because it's, it feels like there are more propositions than usual um, so could you just go over what the ballot will look like so we all they have to vote on the budget as well as these propositions correct? yes so there Maybe will be the back or There's a proposition for the approval of the, bu the budget to authorize us to expend up to the $102 million. There are the board candidates. The library budget will be on the ballot in addition to the library candidate. And then there will be the three separate transportation propositions for the bus purchase, for the charging infrastructure, assuming we get the NYSERDA grants, we would spend that. And then lastly, the GPS telematics. So we'll have sample ballots that people can look at in advance. We always have them available the day of the election as well. The highlights newsletter that I mentioned earlier will also include full information on all of those propositions. 
So um, it will be available. And then, of course, if anybody has any questions on the day of the vote, we have extra highlights newsletters available for people. And I'm there all day long as well and can help answer any questions they have. Can you discuss, like, it was required to break out the two areas, but really the charging stations are imperative with the buses as well. Can you right. talk about that a little bit? Sure. These are all legal resolutions as part of the legal ad that the board approved in March. We reviewed that with our attorneys prior to having the board vote on it. And it was their recommendation that we separate the propositions so that the buses, including the electric buses, were distinct from the charging stations themselves. And the reason for that related to differing lives of those assets called a period of probable usefulness. So they recommended that it appear as two separate propositions. And then of course the third proposition is unrelated to the electric buses. It's simply a technological tool to be installed on the buses. Thank you. And that tool is more of a safety tool. Yeah, it's an efficiency tool. It's a safety tool. It's multi-purpose. And um, picture if you're a sub bus driver trying to learn where to go to stop for your buses, just like we use nav systems in our cars where it's calling out, turn here, turn there. Um, that would be part of what is available to the drivers as they're taking their students to and from school. And, and I know we've said this before, but just a reminder that the vote is in person um, unlike last year, um, and unless an absentee ballot has been requested. Correct. And if people are uncomfortable coming out due to the ongoing COVID environment that we're in, they may request an absentee ballot through the district clerk, Brittany Barrett, and that will be sent to them. And then we will also have the ballot box available in the front of the high school so people can drop that off if they want to make sure it gets here before 5 o'clock on the day of the vote. They can mail it in and, or they can come in person. We'll have all of the COVID safety protocols in place where uh, people will be distanced, they will be wearing masks, um, they'll sign in at the table and we'll keep wiping things down throughout the day. Um, to make sure that it's as clean as possible. What is the deadline to ask for an absentee ballot? Um, depending on whether you would have the ballot picked up or whether you need it mailed to you. If you need it mailed to you, it is, I think, three days, six days ahead of the election. But if you're going to pick it up in person, you could do that up until the day before. Yeah. And is there information on our website for people to find out how to contact Brittany to get their absentee ballot? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, seeing no additional comments or questions coming in, I'm speaking slowly just in case <laughs> anything comes in the last minute. Um, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. And then lastly is just the quick recap. We've touched on some of that now. So you can vote in person from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. on May 18th here in the high school gym A or you can request an absentee ballot. So the absentee ballots won't be opened until the close of the polls on the 18th. We'll tabulate those and then uh, be able to release the results. I assume we're skipping the kids' votes this year? Correct. Will there be um, machines, voting machines or? Yes, okay. we'll have the same scanning because machines. It, yeah, because a few months ago there was some question as to whether Albany County is going to provide those for us. Yes, and they agreed that they would provide them for us, so we'll have them here just as we always do. Excellent. Great. It's really excellent because it means we don't have to manually count the ballots. <laughs> uh, again, I'm going to miss that night of watching. The <laughs> 
I've sat through that a couple thank times. Thank you, Judy. Glad to have the machine. Chris. I just want to thank Judy for all of her hard work on this. This was a crazy year, you know, but to come out where we are now, I know how many countless hours you put in to do this and, you know, the, the ups and downs of whether the state was going to do something or not do something. And luckily they did. That's great. But we were prepared either way. And, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate everything you did on the buses. I mean, the buses seem more of kind of just a, a dream, you know, not that long ago, you know, but because of the time that you put in, because of you looking at the numbers and saying, well, the gap actually isn't that big, and then wait a minute, actually, it might be an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, we appreciate that very much because it's, it's, yeah. it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and, and because of all that, we are in a solid place going forward. So thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Anybody have anything else they want to say about the budget? All right. Um, moving on, uh, the next item on our agenda is our recognition of public comment. We did receive um, a few comments this evening, um, which, as usual, will all be attached to the minutes of the meeting. Um, but to summarize, there was a comment from Bill Davis um, and a comment from Cindy San Lorenzo uh, with respect to um, uh, children returning to school full time um, and the, you know, the sort of where, we're, where we stand um, on that right now, um, as Jody addressed during her superintendent's report. Um, there was also a comment that came in from uh, Michelle Walsh um, about uh, a formal event for seniors um, at the end of the year. Um, and uh, again, it sounds like um, end of the year uh, activities are still under discussion and uh, trying to figure out what can and cannot be done based on ever-changing guidelines from the state. Um, and then uh, lastly, there's a question that comes in from Peter Loricella um, asking why there was not um, an in-person National Honor Society induction event. Um, I, I don't know if you know the answer off the top of your head, but I, I assume... I know Mr. Domel was going to respond okay, to great. that email. Uh, we both received it as well. I believe that they had planned to do a video of some sort with a process prior to any of the guidelines changing, but I, I don't know that 100%, but I know Dave was going to respond. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, action items. A, finance action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance action items one through three. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Um, we already did our professional personnel action items. Um, item C, support personnel action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items one through eight. So, so moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Just note, I see at least two um, retirements on here, and I thank those individuals for their service to the district. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. D, other action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following action items one through six. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I do, Holly. I, yep. um, the new policy 0101, the gender neutral bathroom. So yes. I get that this policy addresses gender neutral bathrooms. I'm wondering though about um, the policy with respect to students using their self-identified gendered bathroom as opposed to a non-gendered bathroom. And I remember looking for it relatively recently and not being able to find anything. Um, and I can't remember what the response was about the district's policy for a student using the bathroom that they're most comfortable using or that they self-identify with. 
which would, as opposed to using a specific non-gendered bathroom. Mm -hmm. So, well, the gender neutral, this was a required policy. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I understand yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But this, but we've allowed kids to use whatever bathroom they identify with for a number of years now. Like it came up as about five or six years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. People yeah. remember that? At, at least four. Yeah, it was a while ago. It's been a long time. But yeah. just unwritten, like I'm wondering how students would know that or how staff would understand that that's the policy. We never had anybody ask. I've never, I'm not aware of anybody asking. I mean, so. well, we have kids who use whatever bathroom they identify with, but it's not been an issue. Yeah, I don't. Is your concern that if it's not in policy and it becomes an issue down the road for some reason, then they're would be a concern. I mean, that's a concern at a higher level. I know just of personal examples in the elementary school level where they wouldn't know unless someone told them um, and issues with staff not understanding that that's district policy. So mm -hmm. I think probably at a high school level, people are more able to sort of fend for themselves, advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. Although it does concern me that it's not part of a written policy if maybe it should be. I don't know. I was just sort of curious for discussion. We could, I know that this is a separate policy. It's not entirely related, but you could it made we me can put it on the policy. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Why don't we put it on? I think it's a really valid point that you're raising, especially at the elementary level, or staff awareness. Should it come up? Come up. I mean, gender neutral. Yeah. I know is based on the governor's yes. rule about gender neutral. It's it's different, right? Do you, um, do you think that it, we should amend this policy to add that into it, or do you think it should be its own separate policy? I mean, I guess that's a discussion maybe for the policy committee. I don't know where it makes more sense. It's it's a similar topic, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's I would think not would the same thing. Probably amend this one to include like specific regarding our district language. Or where the language, the DASA language is about not discriminating against somebody, that's another place it might make sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be inclined to go ahead with this policy now, and we put this on our agenda for our next policy committee yeah. meeting to figure out where the best place is for it. Sounds good. If that works that for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Um, Brittany, w would you be able to make a note to add that to the our policy committee agenda? Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Item seven, future meetings and events. Um, as mentioned, the budget vote and annual election will be on Tuesday, May 18th here at the high school and gym A from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, on Wednesday, May 19th, uh, we have our next regular board meeting anticipating an executive session starting at 6 um, and um, open meeting starting at 7. Uh, the meeting after that is on Wednesday, June 2nd. Um, again, anticipating executive session at 6 and the meeting at uh, 7 o'clock. Um, and then on Monday, June 7th at 5.30 um, is an audit committee meeting. Uh, seeing no need to go back into executive session, could I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting adjourned. Aye.